in this cursed world, it is normal for you to get into conflict with other people. Wait a minute. According to the rules and regulations of God, of the Bible, it is a sin to argue, fuss, and fight with people. But being in this cursed world, it is normal to get into conflict with others. We have to understand that there are people in depression. We have to understand that there are people with mental illnesses. There are people that have been hurt so badly in their past. Let's say that you go somewhere and you see this hurt animal. Either this animal got shot or it got cut by something, but it is injured in a very bad way. Let's say that, hey, you want to come by it and help that hurt animal out. You are no threat to it, but you want to you want to help that animal out. Okay. Because that animal is hurt, that animal in many cases are going to see you as a threat. Please listen. Because that animal is hurt, it is going to see you as a threat. So since it sees you as a threat, that hurt animal, yes, is going to be in attack mode. Even when you are only trying to help it. When you deal with some people on this earth, even when you are trying to help that person because that person have been betrayed by so many people, yes, because that person have been hurt by people that were close to him or her, that person is going to be in attack mode. That person is going to see you as a threat even when you come with open arms, with open hands, trying to love, trying to help that person out. We have to understand this. So if one person is in attack mode, The second person can't be in attack mode. Let's take two people, Bill and John. Let's say Bill is the bad person or the hurt person. And let's say that John is trying to help Bill. So here goes Bill and here goes John. Okay. Now, if bill is in attack mode that means that john have to be the person that is going to bend that is going to close his mouth john have to be the person that is willing to take the pain and do whatever it takes to keep the peace John can't go head to head with Bill because if that happens, it is not going to work right. So John have to be the bigger person and accept what Bill is throwing at him to keep the peace. But John have to be willing 
to try to help Bill no matter what happens. No matter what happens. What if John tries to go head to head with Bill? There is going to be chaos. There is going to be much fighting. Well, John is saying, well, I am just being nice to Bill and he is treating me so wrongly. So I want him to stop treating me wrongly. So I am going to fight back and show him, hey, you have to respect me as a person. So in order to get respect from Bill, John has to fight back with that person. So many people believe that. When you deal with a hurt person, it really doesn't matter how well your logic is. It doesn't matter if you are right in what you are saying. Hey, you are dealing with a hurt person. So no matter what you say, no matter what you do, hey, in the hurt person's eyes, you are a threat. Since you know that person is hurt or acting in a way which may not make any sense, you have to learn how to bow down. You have to learn how to submit. Well, if I bow down, Kevin, that is going to show me as a weak person. No, it's not. No, it is not. It is going to show that you are a wise person. Listen, let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 19. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. This is the reason why I encourage people to read the Bible. You have to stop thinking earthly and think spiritually. If you continue to act and take the logic of this world, you are going to suffer much more. This is why we have to transition our thinking and follow the ways of God. Okay. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So no matter what that hurt person is doing to you, let me highlight this. So no matter what that hurt person is doing to you, take it. So many people don't want to take pain. I know for myself, <laughs> I don't like pain. <laughs> I really don't. I really dislike it so much. Especially when I have not done anything wrong to a person. I don't like to take that pain. But if I am willing to continue doing what I am doing now for people, I have to learn to be accustomed to pain. What this is saying, when someone does you wrong, take it. Because in the end, God is going to avenge you. It is not to say that that hurt person is your enemy. It is not to say that that person is trying to hurt you, per se. But God is going to even the score. So I don't have to worry about doing harm or trying to get even with the people that hurt me. All I have to do is continue to be kind. 
continue to help people and God is going to avenge me, punish the people who is doing me wrong. God is going, listen, man. God is a better teacher than you. <laughs> God is a better teacher than you. You believe that you have to argue and fuss and fight to get your point over. No, you don't. All you have to do is continue to love that person or those people. All you have to do is continue to help those people out. God is going to be the one to teach that person. He is. So you don't have to argue. How many times have you argued? Have any good thing came out of it? No. Out the many times that you argued with a person, how many times any good thing came out of it? Nothing. Nothing. Continue to love that person. Continue to help that person, no matter what they throw at you. If you do that, God is going to even the score. God is going to avenge you. So you don't have to worry about trying to get your point over. You don't have to worry about arguing and fussing with people. You don't. You are commanded to love those people, everyone, no matter what they do to you. But if you are not willing to bow down, if you are not willing to close your mouth and submit to the other person, I am not saying that you have to do sinful things for that other person. What I mean by bowing down to that person is just being willing to take whatever bad thing that they are pushing toward your way. As in, you are not willing to argue, you are not willing to fight back, you are not willing to be sinful, to prove your point, or to fight back. So when you choose to bow down, that doesn't make you weak. What makes you weak is attacking people all the time, believing that they are saying something that they aren't saying. For instance, I believe that you are saying something mean to me, so what I am going to do is fuss, fight, and curse you out, even when I am taking things in the wrong way. That is being weak. That is being foolish, if you think about it. That is a weak person, constantly being offended by things that they should not. That is a weak person always want to fight and argue with people when there is no problem. That is a weak person. But knowing when to close your mouth and be humble, that is a strong person. A person displays their weakness when they are always offended by any and everything that people say. Like if you see a, a person walk an inch or two, you are getting offended. That is a weak person. So let me stop here. We have to learn to close our mouths. We have to learn to submit. Even when that person is wrong. We have to have unconditional love for people. We have to. We have to always show people love even when it hurts us so badly. Let me tell you, 
it really does hurt. But if you continue doing it, it is going to become easier and easier. So you are not weak when you submit. Because what is going to happen, the person that is always arguing and fussing and fighting, that person is going to be punished by God severely until that person gets humbled. A person that is always fighting and fussing is not humble. So God is going to bring so much mess into that person's life until they are humbled. So the more they fight, hey, the more curses that are going to come upon their lives. So you don't have to worry about anything. Just continue praying for that person or for those people. Let me stop here. God bless you.